Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. Today I'm going to be doing another edition in my top 12 recommendation series. I absolutely love filming recommendation videos in this series. I don't know what it is, something about a dozen thrillers that just fit this category perfectly. This series was made for mood readers. I'm a mood reader. It makes sense if you're in the mood for a thriller or horror book that centers around fatal attraction and obsession, then this video is for you. Anytime you're in the mood to read something juicy and salacious with someone who's just overwhelmingly obsessed with someone else, read one of these books. Also, side note, before we get into the recommendations, I'm so sorry for the lawn care noises going on outside of my apartment. It's literally raining outside, so I don't know why they're mowing the grass. Like, it doesn't really make sense to me, but um, they are. So if you can hear that, I really do apologize. But regardless, let's go ahead and get into the recommendations. So, of course, I have 12 books for you that fall under this trope, and I have a whole playlist of top 12 recommendations with other tropes, other sub-genres in the horror and thriller genre umbrellas. And none of these books are going to include stalkers. So I already did my top 12 stalker book recommendations earlier this month. If you missed it, I will link it up above and down below. But I felt like the stalker books deserved their own video. So while some of the obsessed people in these books might give in to stalking tendencies at some point, these books are not going to revolve around a stalker kind of character. It's more about fatal attraction to people who get absolutely obsessed with each other and it leads to terrifying ends or just general obsession. So I want to start off this list with one of my favorite books ever and that is Jar of Hearts by Jennifer Hillier. Oh my god, I love this book. This book revived my love for the thriller genre and I definitely didn't expect it to. Actually, a lovely, lovely subscriber of mine who I've gotten to know so well over the past couple of years, Dawn, sent me <laughs> Jar of Hearts and it is probably the most borrowed book from my library. It's actually loaned out to one of my friends right now. So thank you so much, Dawn, for sending this my way. This book literally reset the fabric of my brain somehow. The twist completely caught me off guard. It was compulsively readable, and it's all about obsession. So in Jar of Hearts, we are following this character named Geo, and she is kind of a morally gray, imperfect woman who got caught up in something really scary in high school that led to the murder of her best friend. Years and years and years later, she's actually convicted for uh, one of the counts that led to her best friend's death. It was like she was a, oh my God, why am I forgetting the word for this? Like the helper in the crime. The word is not coming to my, but her actions actually contributed to her best friend's death. So we follow her in flashbacks when that was going on in jail after she's convicted of this crime, which if you like Orange is the New Black vibes, there's definitely strong vibes of that show in the jail chapters. And then we follow majority of the book, The Aftermath, after she is released from serving her time. And there's now a copycat killer that is back and reenacting this murder of her best friend around her hometown. So they're obviously framing her. They're trying to make it look like she is doing these things now that she's out of jail. But of course she's not because we're following her perspective. We know that. And we're trying to figure out who is so obsessed with her and her case that they would do these crimes and what their motivation would be. And once you get into it, the level of obsession that is there and the fatal attraction that started the whole murder to begin with is insane. I can't tell you the exact ins and outs because that's all spoilers and there are so many twists in this book, but if you like fatal attraction, trust me, you will love Jar of Hearts. Next up, I want to talk about some horror and we're going to talk about Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke by Eric LaRocca. I absolutely love Eric LaRocca. He's one of my favorite authors and their work is just 
absolutely incredible at building suspense, especially around obsession. In this novella, we kind of see this stranger to stranger transactional interaction go further and further and further until it borders on crazy obsession. Basically, how the book starts out is there is somebody on a queer forum, like kind of like a Craigslist kind of thing, saying, hey, I'm trying to sell this vintage apple peeler. And we are just reading that post and then the messages back and forth. So it's written in this like media style of like, AOL Messenger, AIM, and it's really fun to read it that way. And we just see over the course of these messages how the sale morphs into something a lot more dangerous and a lot more deadly. One of the people in this transaction gets absolutely obsessed with the other and the relationship just sours very quickly. The end, the imagery is so haunting. It's such a quick, fast and horrifying read. The suspense builds. It's all about that fatal attraction relationship. If you're looking for that, this is the perfect little novella for you. And staying on the horror train, I don't have too much horror, just like looking at the books I pulled for this video. I don't have too much horror to recommend for the like obsession fatal attraction trope. I feel like most of the time thrillers do that a lot better than horror but another horror pick that i do have to recommend is the southern book club's guide to slaying vampires by grady hendrix grady hendrix is another one of my favorite horror authors and this is one of my favorites from him of course this centers around obsession because we are following a housewife in i believe like the 80s and 90s uh is when this book is set and she <laughs> gets obsessed with the neighbor next door because she thinks that he is a vampire and she's just not gonna drop it. Her and her little nosy suburban book club become absolutely obsessed with this idea of their neighbor being a vampire and it's all they can talk about. And we are trying to figure out if they're all just bored housewives and they're obsessed with this idea for no reason or if he's actually a vampire and either way, is he actually the cause of the disappearances of little girls that are happening on the outside of the suburban neighborhood? It is so good, so funny. It balances humor and horror really, really well, but it doesn't lose the like creepiness of the obsession. We are fully in it with her, with our main character. And this is another one that has scenes in it that just live rent free in my brain. If you've read this, then you know about the cockroaches and the rats. This horror, especially around little creatures, does not play. I'm serious. If you don't like rats, and cockroaches, please don't read this because it will scar you. Next up, we're gonna get into more thrillers, starting out with The Swap by Robin Harding. I love Robin Harding. I feel like she's so underrated. A lot of her thrillers are just like juicy and I actually have a couple of hers on this list because they are a lot of fatal attraction tropes in here as well. In The Swap, we are following this adult woman and this teenage girl and they have kind of this weird relationship. There's some obsession going on there and the teenager actually sees her adult mentor slash friend partake in a partner swap with another couple and it completely upends everyone's lives. The girl who witnesses it and has this bad boy piece of information that she goes and like spreads around the little suburban town and both couples. And there are a multitude of reasons why that happens, but it's really the obsession and fatal attraction outside of these monogamous relationships that are getting mixed up and in the teen and mentor relationship that just like causes all of this drama. This book is just straight tea. I devoured this one in less than a day because it was just so much exciting drama. If you are a nosy bitch and you just like to talk about other people's relationships, people from high school, if you and your best friend can sit around doing that shit for hours, you're gonna love this book because it is basically that. 
It's not too deep really, but it is such a fun, exciting time. And the twist at the end <laughs> totally caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting this one to have as much as an impact at the end as it did. I just thought it was going to be a juicy little story, but the twists were pretty good. Next up, we're going to talk about The Good Samaritan by John Mars. And this is a very unique plot for a thriller. We are following a woman who works at a suicide hotline and instead of trying to convince the people on the other end of the line to like take a safer route, create a safety plan and not complete their suicide, instead she actively talks them into it. And someone is catching on to this. One of her victims' husband is like, hell no, there's no way my wife would have killed herself. And I think there was something fishy going on on that call. So we're following him and our operator as he learns more and more and more about his wife's case and starts to come after our killer main character. And then of course we have the killer POV as well which is really exciting. She is obsessed with talking these people into suiciding, which is just absolutely abhorrent, but also such a unique perspective. I've never seen a killer character written like that. And then the husband character is obsessed with this operator and trying to figure out if he's right that his wife was convinced to completing her suicide. Once you find out the truth at the end and both people's obsessions come to a head, it's literally insane. I feel like nobody talks about this book and everyone should. Y'all know me, I'm not the biggest fan of John Mars. I honestly don't like a lot of his books, but this one is the standout from his backlist. Next up, let's talk about a weird one. One of my weird ones that I love. <laughs> if you're a weird horror loving girl, this is one for you. If you're not, then maybe don't take this recommendation, but I love it. And that is Temper by Lane Fargo. We are following a up and coming actress in Chicago, I believe. Chicago, Philly, Pittsburgh. I don't know. One of those like northeastern cities big 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 city and she's an actress she's trying to make it out here and she gets cast in this play and her and the director slash star that's playing opposite her in this play have a very weird relationship this book is basically fatal attraction in a book like the, the whole point is the fatal attraction between the director character and the actress character. And the perspectives that we get, I'm not going to spoil, but they're genius. The way that the plot unfolds is really character driven, not really plot driven at all, very conceptual, very literary horror vibes, but it captures what it's like to be a woman trapped in this really abusive, gross, awkward power dynamic relationship uh, really, really well. And it is super, super creepy. So again, this one is not for everyone, but I absolutely loved it. So if you are a weird literary horror girl like myself, take this one. If not, maybe you can skip it. I just don't want y'all to get mad at me because this one is not a basic ass thriller. So take with that what you will. But like I said, for me, absolutely loved it and the commentary phenomenal we had a book club discussion over this book i believe it was my november yeah my november pretty girl book club pick over on patreon and it was very split half of us loved it half of us hated it so <laughs> take it what you will going back into normal easy to read thrillers we have an anonymous girl by greer hendrix and sarah pekinen I will never stop recommending this book. It is so underrated to me. And as you can see on the cover, like there's just obsession. This woman back here is watching this woman and this woman has no idea. And this woman, the woman being watched is this little college girl who's just participating in a psychological study. The woman in the back who's watching her is the psychologist who gently led her into participating in her study for nefarious reasons and as their paths converge and we learn a little bit more about each of them we learn why the psychologist gently nudged our main character into participating and what the obsession is with her this one is super twisty kept me on the edge of my seat 
everyone else was like giving this one three stars when it came out i don't know why this is a five star but for me like it just hit everything came together i tore through it so fast the twists were satisfying and i love 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 obsession tropes so it just kept me hooked from the first page next up let's talk about the baby shower by se lines i absolutely love this one. Oh my gosh this is another one that's super super underrated if you haven't read from SC Lyons, they are a British thriller author and I absolutely love their writing style. I just like feel like her books are compulsively, compulsively readable. I just devour them. And The Baby Shower has a lot more to say beyond just like your average exciting thriller. It is that, but there is some feminist commentary in here that I really appreciated about the obsession and toxicity that can happen in female friendships. If you are a woman who has struggled to make friends with other women, you're gonna love this one. And the plot centers around the obsession, the toxically close friendship between these two women as both of them are struggling or trying to navigate fertility and pregnancy. If any of that kind of content is triggering for you, I wouldn't recommend this one, but if you can handle that, this one is so, so good. The character development is spot on but it's not character driven. There's still a lot of plot in here and the obsession reaches a level that like you would never, you would never believe. Like I just, I cannot explain to you how much people are missing out on this book. I don't know why it doesn't have more hype, but it is phenomenal. And like I said, the commentary just hit. I was highlighting reading this book, which I never do that for a thriller. It has everything. It's exciting. It says something. There's obsession. I just, I can't ask for more. Jumping back into Robin Harding, I have another recommendation from her for this video, and that is The Arrangement. This one is a sugar daddy relationship gone wrong. We're following a student who is down on her luck. She cannot make her loan payments, her tuition payments. Her life is just going downhill, and she notices that one of her friends is actually doing really well for herself, especially for being a student from a not so wealthy family. She asks her how she's doing it, how she's making ends meet, and gets introduced into the world of being a sugar baby. And she meets this one guy on this date and uh, things go a little bit further than just a transactional relationship. One or both, I'm not gonna give it away, get absolutely obsessed and things come to a murderous end. I want it to be really, really vague for you. I don't want to give away anything. So you go in semi-blind and you're just taken on a ride by this book. The absolute crazed obsession of one of the particular characters in this book just, I mean, you can feel it. It is visceral. It's twisty. It's exciting. Again, Robin Harding just writes like tea, drama, salacious, Fun. So if you like that kind of thing, you're going to love this one. And again, this is another one not a lot of people talk about. And for my last three recommendations, I put them all at the end because they are perfect for right now. If you're going to pick up any book for the coming summer months, I would recommend these three for this trope because they're the most summery of all my picks. And as a seasonal mood reader, I feel like that's important to mention. These are all very like vacation forward, pool books, beach books. So if you're looking for something like that, here are the top recommendations in this category that I could ever think of. Starting with One of the Girls by Lucy Clark. Oh my gosh, is this book just a mental vacation. I love it. It is set in Greece and it literally feels like you're in Greece. Like I think I said in the vlog that I read this, like I would read this no plot, like just for the vibes alone because we are following a bachelorette party and this group of girls goes to Greece and we're seeing all the fun things they're doing. We're getting the descriptions of the food and the drinks and the weather and the surroundings. And oh my God, it's just like gorgeous imagery, perfect summer vibes the whole time. But on top of that, we have this bridal party going out of control. It's again, a lot of commentary on toxic female friendships, fatal attraction within the bridesmaid 
party, ooh, tea. It is so drama and there is so much obsession. Is the maid of honor obsessed with the bride? Is one of the bridesmaids obsessed with the bride's potential future husband? There's just so many subplots overlapping and we are trying to find out throughout the whole book which one of these bitches was so obsessed that they went crazy and killed someone. That's right, someone ends up dead, someone's the killer. We're trying to figure out who it is as we're parsing through all of these overlapping obsessive subplots. If there is a book that captures the perfect level of summer vibes and obsession, this is it, one of the girls highly recommend. Next up, I have We Were Never Here by Andrea Bartz. This was a past book of the month pick, and we are following two best friends who take a yearly vacation to a tropical destination. So again, those vacation vibes are really, really strong. However, last year on their vacation, something not so great happened, and the best friend had to kill a man in self-defense because he was going to assault her if she didn't protect herself and so our main character is really stressed out about it she is wondering how she's going to recover and her best friend doesn't seem as affected by it so she's like am I crazy for being really affected by this last year she's having these PTSD flashbacks on their current vacation and then the very 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 weird coincidence that happened last year just so happens to occur Again, the best friend is in a situation where she's allegedly about to be assaulted, so she kills a man in self-defense in a foreign country. And our main character is like, is my bestie Loki a murderer? Like, is that what's happening here? Is that what's actually going on? And we are trying to figure out if that is the case and what motivation she would have. And on top of it, there is again that theme of like toxically close obsessed female friendships. This one is very, very similar to one of the girls and also the baby shower where it's obsession in the context of a female best friend relationship. But there's that added element of following the perspective of a murderer and having to cover up these murders. It just adds such a level of suspense and fast pacing to the plot because it really does feel like they're running against the clock trying to make sure that they evade these foreign police. They don't want to end up in an Amanda Knox situation. And then of course there's their own relationship dynamics on top of that. So there's just a lot going on in this book with the vacation vibes. Perfect pool book. I read this entire thing in the pool and got completely sunburned because I could not stop reading it. And the final book I have to recommend for you in this video is The Hunting Wives by May Cobb. This is one of my favorite books of, I believe 2020 was the year that it came out and I devoured this one. This was another poolside read. It's perfect for summer. We are following this woman who is new to a little East Texas town, and she is not prepared for the bougie, catty Southern women that she is walking into in this suburb. But she really wants to get in on the like it girl group of the neighborhood. So she starts to try to get her way into this group and along the way it becomes obsessed with its queen bee. She starts to spend more and more and more of her time obsessing about these women rather than, you know, attending to her family <laughs> as they moved into this new neighborhood. They're all trying to like adjust and she completely drops her family and is just like, no, I need to be a cool girl in the context of my little Texas suburb. And wow, if you are from a Texas suburb like myself, this is like eerily familiar. Like the way that these Facebook moms sometimes get, it's like, it's like that in here, but on steroids. It is so juicy, so drama, so salacious. The obsession and fatal attraction is at the center of the story and the end will have your jaw dropping. So those are my top 12 thriller and a couple horror books. 
with a obsession slash fatal attraction trope at the center of the story. I hope you guys got a couple of recommendations from this video. If you did and you liked it, go ahead and give me a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I have three more of these top 12 recommendation videos planned out, written out, on deck. I just have to film them, edit them, and get them posted. So look forward to that in the next couple months. We're going to have increasingly specific tropes with 12 recommendations for them. So I have ones planned out for how far would you go for your family trope, revenge trope, and blackmail tropes. So if you have any more that you want to see, let me know down below in the comments and I will film a recommendation video for that specific subgenre or trope or just like thing that's fairly common in a thriller or horror book. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Don't forget to read a book and go to therapy this week, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!